This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. The Johnson puts it in the air. Aiden Fred wins the oh! It's the oh! It's still with Lee Gregory. He's in the box. Tries to screw him. Is it going to be there? Yes! yes! Oh my word! Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Wednesday week. This week, the greatest escape. Hey, and tonight I'm joined by Stevie, Holly, and Simon. We're all as positive as can be while Dan's gone over to Tunisia to get his teeth done again. So, how are we, everybody? Great. Got to be happy, aren't we? We've got to be happy. Bad, thanks. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, fantastic. Well, here we go. Um, We've done it. Well, not we. That's the royal we. The lads have done it. The team's done it. The club's done it. We've stayed up. We are championship owls for another season. Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll not sunk in yet. Yeah. Hey, it's not... Genuinely, not, it genuinely not sunk in yet. No? I never doubted him. You all said that it were a <laughs> I never doubted them. I would I would never slag these boys off. How amazing. Can't believe we did it. I'll, I'll just get the WhatsApp group and just go through it. Scroll <laughs> through all Don't go looking back through any of these old podcasts either. Yeah. Want me. <laughs> it's um <laughs> I will not bring up the WhatsApp from last season. Uh, everyone's heard it a million times. They're all shit. They're all shit. They're all shit. That won't be either. I love them all. Which is now my ringtone. I, uh, I quite like it. Um, so, going into Sunderland, just needing one point, but obviously all the other teams. And, hey, I thought all the, all the other teams were going to probably lose. And uh, that proved me wrong, didn't it? So, we had to go into Sunderland, just wanting one point. But um, Danny Roll did say he wanted nine points out of the last three games. So, and he's going with all intentions to win. Um, so, Simon, Holly, you were the um, representative for the podcast up at Sunderland. Um, I'll start with ladies first. Simon, um, how did you... Um, <laughs> <laughs> how, are you how are you feeling driving up to Sunderland, mate? Uh, I think you said a while ago, shaking like a pooing dog, I think the words were, weren't they, Ashley? Uh, and, yes, um, so, yes. And I have taken that on, and I think we need to have it as a tat T-shirt too. Um, it was, <laughs> I don't know, it was a strange old journey. Oh, uh, me and the boy went, oh, I, I did actually think we were going to turn them over. I, 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 I never thought the, the other results would have gone as they did, but I thought... We'd, we'd done the hardest games in regards to Blackburn and West Brom. But uh, Sunderland, although we've not particularly had happy travels over there in the last uh, 18 months, have we, really? Re, uh, uh, playoff semis and that wonderful game sandwiched between Christmas and New Year where I think we lost 5-0. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. You had to be positive, didn't you, mate? That was the only way we had to go into it. It's positive like the team did. Ole, how did you feel getting up? I know how you did in reality. I know exactly how you felt going up to Sunderland. But about the football, how did you? Uh, how did you feel? Uh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> I I decided to go out and see my friends on Friday for a quiet few drinks, and then uh, left Liam, who were giving me a lift, a voice note at three a.m. singing to him that I didn't know what time he was picking me up, and he replied a couple of hours later saying half eight. So. Uh, <laughs> just enough time to get my PJs on and then get back ready to go to Sunderland. So, uh, yeah, uh, I had the beer fear combined with the SWFC fear. It it was not a good morning for me. It was not a good morning for me. But uh, I, I feel like anyone who says they were positive before the game, that's because you know it's already happened and you, you, that's you saying it now. Nobody who has watched Wednesday, even though last week we said there's only one permutation, that means we can go down. If any club can find that way, it's this one. 
so I don't think anyone were positive about it. I think everybody were absolutely crapping it, to be honest. What, how were you? What did you think, Ash? I was uh, I was very much shaking like the proverbial uh, dog. Um, I was I am I unfortunately I, I was at home. I would love to have gone to the game, but uh, other things uh, I had planned. So I was at home. I watched it. So run up to the game. Yes, I was. I'm not going to lie. I was definitely think um, bricking it. Uh, and the the one out of twenty seven um, permutation that could have happened very nearly did because of other things that happened at other stadiums. But, hey, Stevie, how, you, you, you were cool as a cucumber. You were cooler than Jack Hunt taking a penalty in a playoff, weren't you? I I, I felt all right, to be fair. Um, I had a, I think I had a moment Saturday morning, I think I put on the chat, I, I had a moment Saturday morning where I was a little bit apprehensive. Um, did you think it was a must-win game, Stevie? <laughs> no, no. I think that, that's gonna that's gonna haunt you. I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. I think. Yeah. That, but I never said. Look, I, 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 I stand by what I said. They weren't must win, and it, it, until we got to the end. Uh, I think, with hindsight, the must win game was obviously Blackburn, wasn't it? Um, West Brom, Blackburn. We'd done the work. We, you know, although there was there was still the possibility the work was done. You know, that in the two games previously, with the outstanding performances that we put in away at Blackburn and then at home. Um, I guess against West Brom. Um, I think from from my perspective, there was just that Wednesday of it all, as Holly's just alluded to, that was it one out of twenty seven different permutations. You said was that right? Is it one out yeah, of twenty seven things like, that could yeah. happen? Someone um, a lot cleverer than me came up with that earlier in the uh, in the week. It's, it was the most Shef it would have been the most Sheffield Wednesday thing in the world for that one thing out of twenty seven to have happened. So. You know, for us that were nervous, we were nervous because we know what this club's like and what it's done to us in the past and what it will do to 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 us again in the future. Um, but credit to credit to the lads, it was we've we, we've been on a phenomenal run. Um, you know, we've we, we've taken some hits on the, in in the last couple of months, but we've done a lot of legwork. And you know, you don't really sort of you don't take stock until after the fact. But if you look at the run that we've been on in terms of the games that we've lost, and I, I think I've, I've overheard somebody saying just off air, is it three out of 14 we've lost or something like that in, in yeah. the run? Um, you know, that's, that's ridiculous for And all the things that you look at and everything that, and I'm getting ahead of myself, everything that um, you look at in terms of the, the, the Sky Bet accounts that are dropping on and, you know, these um, second tier podcasts and all this, and the, we're, we've gone on this run, we've gone on that run. Don't um, give them a shout out, Steve. <laughs> well, you know, with my a minor miracle, by the way, but that's yeah. another story. Um, it's it's an absolute. It, it's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I think the, the joking aside, I think the the work was done probably before Saturday morning. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. There was a point in that West Brom game where they had a shot, and it hit their own player on the back of the head. That never happens in our favour ever. And at that point, I thought, do you know what? It actually mine this mine stuff might drop for us this time. Normally that us that it's his own player and then it all goes to crap. Yeah. But it actually went for us that that and I thought, do you know what? Mm. Maybe <laughs> maybe something's gonna drop. Well when um obviously it was a half twelve kickoff, we all know that, and half eleven came round and like everyone, don't you look for the team? I've got the uh because I've had a spare five minutes, I've got I've got a I've got the line up here. So, uh, for everyone that knows, you've got Beadle starting in goal, Valentin, Palmer, Bernard, Iorfa, Johnson, Volks, Bannon, Windass, Masaba and E.K. Ugbo. Now, that was an unchanged team from the West Brom game, which surprised me a little bit. Um, I don't know how... I mean, I think we've we've said made comments on the starting lineup before and we've said, basically, we trust what Danny does and in the last... 10 games he's, he's got it hell of a lot right with a with changing a couple of people around so how, how do you think to see the uh starting lineup saying simon um i'll start with you mate i i i was absolutely fine with it you know it, it's it's what we played against uh west prom previous game i had no issue with it it did it, it teases a little bit aren't they with um pervader um in, in the uh sort of training videos and there's one where they were showing somebody training and his head popped up and i was surprised he wasn't on the bench but obviously danny didn't feel he was fit enough to play um 
So I was more than happy with it. I was more than happy with it. I thought we accounted so well over the last couple of games, mate, that, you know, <laughs> Danny could play 11 grandmas and I'd support him because he just <laughs> seems to know how to motivate a team, to coach a team. And, and yeah, it, it was bang right for me. It was no surprises at all. Stevie? Oh, sorry. Go, no. Sorry. I was sorry, Holly. Say, go on, go on, Holly. It's, sorry. It's what I thought, really. Uh, it would have been nice if we're not going to get Pavida again, it would have been nice to see him, see him, and you know, it like, but yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Stevie, how did you think about the starting lineup? I mean, it was the same, and we won against all, uh, oh, sorry, West Brom 3 0. So you don't change a winning team, do you? No, absolutely not. Um, I, I, I have no complaints with the lineup. Um, I think. I think when you like, like you've just said, when 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 you put in the performances that you have against Blackburn and the performance that you did against West Brom, um, you, you you talk about players earning the shirt, and, and you're looking at the bench and what was available. I don't think there was anybody there that you'd, poten you, you'd potentially say, right, who are you going to drop out for those players that are going to come in? Um, and I think there's a there's a very short list of players that we've got that we'd say, right, he's indispensable. Um, and he has to be involved regardless. And I don't think there was anybody on the bench on Saturday uh, that, that fitted that mould. I, I agree with Holly and Sai. It would have been nice having had that little tease of Pervader. Um, and I'd heard a couple of sort of knockings that he might have been in and around for being on the bench for Sunderland. Um, thankfully, we didn't need him. We didn't miss him. It's, it, 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 it is quite sad that we, we're not going to get that last sort of hurrah with him um, because he's been an absolute credit. You know, and had he stayed fit throughout his loan period, I think there'd have been genuinely think there'd been an argument and a conversation for him being in and around the player of the year. I think he's been that good um, in the, the little cameos that we've seen. And if he'd have sustained that over a period of time, regardless of how um, how many games or how short the period of time had been, for the games that he would have been involved in, I think he'd have been up there. Um, but no, no, no arguments from me from from, from a team selection point of view. Let's get into it in Sunderland. Um, it's um, like Simon said, it's not been a happy hunting crowd for other um, quite important games for Sheffield Wednesday. But uh, if you if you went on social media and looked at some of their comments from Sunderland fans, it was it was like they were in the relegation battle with us. They'd not won. They I think they'd won one in ten. I think it was, and they were really struggling. So for, to for, to hear them that saying. We've all we've already got the three points. It was quite refreshing from a, a team that were obviously all, already on the beach but struggling. Um, there were um, a couple of them that they're. I think they're one of them teams that have benefited from the season ending when it has, mm -hmm. which as I'm sure we'll look at the table later. But they're not that far off of it, are they? And, they, and their fans are real. Were really really down. Um, Really credit to Sunderland fans, though, because before and after the game, they were absolutely brilliant. Uh, except when they were shouting, give us your manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Right, so we uh, we started really well. I know Sunderland had, but I'm going to um, I'm going to let the first, the fourth person who's guesting me, Molly, who's just behind Steve, she can have the first word on this. Liam Palmer, what do you reckon, Molly? Uh, he's just Liam Palmer. He's uh, he's the best player we probably ever signed. He's the best player we will probably ever sign, and he's just amazing. <laughs> How much pocket money has he given you to say that? <laughs> Twenty quid. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, first goal always important, and I think it. Looking at the the replays and the uh, highlights and stuff, and it was a bit cagey. Did it feel like that, Simon? In the first first twenty, well, what was it? Twenty eight minutes, I think. Palms got on twenty nine. I think we we came out we came out of the blocks fairly quickly, impressed them for quite some time in the first ten fifteen. Sunderland had space, uh, but it, it it really seemed to me that we were the t the better team, certainly for the first fifteen. I thought Palmer and Pole were superb on the right hand side. I thought that their interlinking play, you know, it was almost reminiscent of 
Worthington and Kingy at points from the 90s. Those are old enough to remember. Um, Pole, I thought, was outstanding. And, and Palmer's role at that right wing back, a uh, sort of right back, right wing back role, is his best, best role um, playing for Wednesday. And um, they linked up so well for that first goal and, 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 and in a way for the second goal as well. Um, now, we were the better team. I thought Sunderland were a shadow of that team we played at Hillsborough back last year. I mean, mm. they, well, they beat us 2 0. And I think they sort of took the foot off the gas in the second half, didn't they, when they played at Hillsborough? And, uh, because I think they felt embarrassed that they could probably beat us 6 7 0. You know, what a difference in a team compared to who we played on Saturday. Unbelievable, really. I but think I th they, they did have some chances. They got into some really good positions, but they just were all the last bit was the like they were all yeah. off target weren't they, they yeah, were they couldn't, couldn't they? injuries I, I mean I mean where 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 the away end is we're up in the gods aren't we we uh, I saw Holly walking in as we we were already taking our seats and the the yeah there were a lot of steps the the shots were just I mean they'd, they'd had a number of shots but I don't know how many I'm sure you'll share the stats but there were so many off target it, it was like horrendously off target. Yeah, yeah. horrendously off target. Did they, had they... Eight, they had 18 shots. Uh, yeah. I, I just saw it earlier. I haven't got the stat. 18 shots, 12 off target. I think three. <coughs> I've three, got three, it. Three, I've three, got it. Um, do you want me to do the whole, the whole stats? Yeah, go on then. Uh, possession, they had 64.5%. We had 35.5%. They had 18 shots to our 12. Three of theirs were on target. We had two on target. Nine of theirs were off target. And they had six block shots, six corners. We had five of each. Um, touches in the box. By the way, BBC have updated their stats, haven't they? Uh, the touches in the box, 32 to Sunderland versus R15. Uh, Beadle made three saves. Their keeper didn't make any. Um, but to, to testament to the uh, to the job that our back three did, um, in terms of aerial duels that were won, they, had, they won five, we won nine. So... Whilst we scored the goals, we also defended really, really well. So, and that that has been a that's been a sign over the last few games, though that that defending. I think that that um, Bernard coming back, I was a, I was always a bit worried about Ayofa being in the central centre uh, the back three, uh, and then Palmer slotted in at the, at the right centre back has, has been great. Much preferring there than in the middle. I don't know why anyone thought he were a centre midfielder. I really don't. But I think he's gone back to right centre back. And fitted him perfectly, so he can um, do whatever he wants. That kid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree yeah. about I offer. I offer. I mean, I never liked him as that right, right back, right wing back, but it no. really suit. It really suits him in that position um, alongside uh, Dijon. Be superb. But um, did uh, they had a goal disallowed? Yeah. Was that before we scored, or was that yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that was before. So they had a they had a header. Um, I I have tried to look, but this. The replays, what I've seen is this. It's not conclusive. I'm, I'm sure they'll reckon it was onside. Uh, spot on, definitely. Offside. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it was of course. offside. It was yeah. offside. There is, there is an it's angle gone. that was replayed, and you can see that he's offside. It, it, it was yeah. the right call. It was lucky. It was it was a lucky call on in or fortuitous on our part because it was um, on his own, ironically, wasn't it? ironically, I think it was Iorpa that was a, in in a little bit of no man's land, and the ball's gone over his head. Yeah. Um, got got caught a, a yard to the right of where he needed to be, um, and there was a little bit of holding with two other players. But um, he, he was definitely offside. And you can argue. Um, I think at the time they they sort of said it, we've got away with one there. But if you look at it from a defensive point of view, if we've held our line in the right way um, to to catch somebody offside, then that's not that's not bad defensive work, is it? No, not no. at all. It's, it's what you it's what you're coaching for, isn't it? Thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a comment from Craig here. Um, just going back to the first goal. What a ball from Baz for that goal, by the way. That goal yeah. could be oh. the goal of the season. The whole build-up, not just that pass, but all of it. Mm. I've yeah. watched it so many times and I've not got yeah. bored of it. It is if, the goal of the season. And that ball it, from Basler. If Ipswich, if Ipswich hadn't scored theirs, that has basically got the... If you listen to Ipswich fans, it's got the Puskas award, but it was a cracking finish by the uh, Burns, weren't it? Outside of his foot, um, it would be up there, team goal of the season. Yeah, you, totally right. I mean, was it? It was like Palmer started it all off as well. 
yeah. On the right hand side. Palmer, Palmer and Paul on that right hand side were just it. they couldn't cope with him. Couldn't yeah. cope with him. And then uh, yeah, like I said, the touch from Bannon that for me, I know you get all comments on here and everything, but we haven't seen enough of them from him for me. Obviously, his stats, I think he's got three assists and one goal all season. So he's he's playing the balls and everything, no doubt. And but yeah, it was it was it's instinctive first just, time, weren't it? Yeah, it's not even just that for Palmer to carry on his run the way yeah. that he does, knowing that Bannon's going to do that. Every yeah. bit of it what, is just from, fantastic. From a right centre back, because yeah. yeah. that's where he was yeah, at that exactly. time, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. Uh, thing. What do you think to the uh, Palmer goal, Stevie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, giving no, people no. what they want to. They they know you love him. They they know you love him. So come on, Stevie, just indulge everybody for thirty seconds. Molly's just said you love him more than you love me. Not a picture there. He's been. Well, I have got he's, there, he's, 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 Give Molly a Palmer picture up there, <laughs> and he's claiming that it's not dry, but that was about five months ago, so I've stole it back. Crazy. Anyway, is it your um, bedtime? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Just before you go, Molly, if you go in, just uh, how many pictures are in his office of uh, and, of the girls? Girls. Yeah, you, you have got none. <laughs> one. Yeah. I've got one. I've got oh, one. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, joking aside, I, I, I thought the goal as a team goal was absolutely outstanding, and I think uh, TW Football went early, didn't they? With the, um, they, they couldn't release the, um, the analysis because it wasn't available on their platform or whatever it is that they used. Yeah, but I think I'd why, seen, why I've not gone back to revisit it. I'd seen something where they said it, it, it was how many passes, and we kept possession of the ball for like fifty-eight seconds or fifty seconds, whatever it may have been. Um, the way that we have taken possession, kept possession and just passed the ball about, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and from, from a personal point of view, as somebody who is such a fanboy of the guy, it, it meant, it, it was great to see that a guy who is, you know, very much maligned and, they, and we could do a whole podcast on my opinion of why people are a little bit down on, on him and it being his past performances, his past seasons. I've said it before, and you know, I'll say it again. I, I I genuinely think there's a place for Liam Palmer in our squad going forwards next season. I don't care how old he is. I don't care, um, you know, what people think of him playing in certain positions. Um, the, the, the guy's an absolute utility. And the fact that he's gone in um, over people like Bambo and he went in over... Uh, he's been in over Iorfa in the last couple of games and we do respect. I don't think he's put a great deal. He's done a great deal wrong. Um, he just doesn't get the credit that he deserves for the things that he does because people get hung up on the thing. But, you know, he's, he's not the perfect player. There were a couple of times in, on on, um, on Saturday, there was one where he's tried to hook one with, with the outside of his foot. And it's gone out of play. And I just thought that's the kind of thing that he does that people are going to absolutely hammer him for. But, you know, for him to be able to to, to find himself in those situations in that position, I was absolutely delighted. I thought it was a great goal. Um, if, if if Man City score a goal like that, we, we wax lyrical about De Bruyne and we wax lyrical about, about you know, Haaland, Silva, you know, whatever players that have been there and done it. Um, it was that, that sort of goal in terms of the quality of it. But, you know. Because for Wednesday, we don't recognise it. The thing is with Palmer, he has got something that money can't buy. Like, he, because of his connection with the club, is it a coincidence that last day for both, like the, the Peterborough game and then this one, is it a coincidence that he's, he's, he's brought the goods on the, on the debt when we needed it? Or is it because he's got, the, there's 100% and then there's the extra bit that you can't buy that Palmer's got that he's willing to put in? You'll always get that from him, won't you? Because he's a Wednesday eye. You can see that when he scores. Then you're absolutely right, Holly. He, 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 he's for me. He's always. He's never less than a seven for me. Never less than a seven out of ten. And he's always been never less than a seven. You know. So when he goes to an eight and nine, it's actually, to be honest, comparable to one of the other players. It's actually eleven and twelve out of ten. It's that eleven on 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 the on 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 the. Uh, it's just 11, 12, because he is so, so committed to the cause. 
yeah. and you see that and he's done it stoke he's done it uh, west brom and 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 on, at sunderland and he seems to have found his his place is that position which he played uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll wax lyrical about him and paul he, he if if we keep palmer for next season him and paul on that right wing will be the equivalent to what we had with worthington and kingy in the oh, 90s I, I think the other thing just to add on that side and uh, is you know, for all the negativity that he's had, and there is a, a core within the fan base that will say he's he's not, um, you know, he's he's not to the standard, and we'd get rid of him, we'd release him, he, he needs to go, he's not good enough, and blah blah blah. The, the the reality is, you know, he's come back. Let's be when when was he at Tram Tramia? Early twenty tens, wasn't it? But he's gone through. Gray, he's gone through Cavile, he's gone through Lukai, he's gone through, you know, every manager that has come in. There's been a, a, a core of people that have said he's not up to it, and there's been a core of people that have gone right. We're going to leave him out, and there have been times where he has been left out. Um, he wasn't part of Chisco's plans at the start of the season. Um, he wasn't part of necessarily part of um, Danny Rule's plans, but he's forced his way back in with the way that he plays. And I would argue that there's probably behind the scenes, there'll be a situation where he is the hardest working player in training. He is the most disciplined. He's the guy that looks after himself the most. He's the guy that will go above and beyond to get the, the you know, to, to, to the standard that he needs to, because he's not Barry Bannon and he's not Josh Windass. He's not that ilk of player. He's just a guy, close your ears, who works fucking hard. Yeah. You know? And Absolutely more right. Than, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and I think he, he he deserved his goal. And every time he has scored, you do see it. It means the world to him. And that's what you want, in it? Because uh, I think, was it last season? I think Windass, he said he'd never celebrate in League One. Well, obviously, he did in the playoff final pretty well. Like, but he did say that. But for a player like Palmer, who who is playing for his, his club, uh, and just every time he scores, or even when someone else scores, uh, I've noticed on a couple of the you know inside match days, um, I think it was um, Smith when he equalised equalized against Norwich. I think Palmer was the one who went in front of the cop. Like they'd all celebrate, and he was the one at the front giving it some. So yeah, yeah I mean, he, he deserves it. He deserves it. But I mean, so that's one nil. So everything's going well. Holly, I, I don't know what what the um, signal was like for data or anything like that. But were you checking your phone? So I, I around you checking your phone because I tell you what, I was sat at home refreshing every minute. So I signed up to the Sunderland Wi Fi <laughs> and I, I honestly counted down the minutes from after that first goal and I was literally just refreshing it. And it was like all of the people behind me were like crowded around looking at it and we were just refreshing it over and over and over. <laughs> Nothing seemed to happen for ages in the other games. And we're going, I is it actually refreshing? And then, so yeah, I I turned into the worst person to stand yeah. next to, and I, I literally was, oh, we've only got half, we've only got an hour left to go, or whatever. Literally counting out every single minute. It, it um, yeah, I, I tell you, it was saying we're looking, and it was just like nil, 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 and then we we were like one nil up, and it's like oh, it's, going, it's going our way. Um, but I mean, dreams you would have got said another goal before half time, and we got what we wanted. And the man who's probably been been in the most thing for Sheffield Wednesday in the last few weeks is Josh Windass for for quite a few reasons. I mean, uh, his his goal score, he was out injured. Obviously, we've we've we'll come on to the uh, the video that he's put out today, which is a work of art, I've got to say. Um, but he come up with the goods again. He scored against West Brom. Um, he scored against um, Blackburn, and he obviously got three and three Sunderland on on. Saturday. So, what did you make to the goal, Simon? What, did you think it was coming when it should have done? Because I felt we were, we, for all them having all the shots, I thought we were quite. quite yeah, good. again, I'll go back. I'll go back to Palmer and Paul on the right wing again. It, no, Windass, okay, please. Again. Windass, please. You know, yeah, but yeah, but it was down to them who actually, you know, they they made the goal. There was Paul was Paul had got their left back in his back pocket. I mean, he was a big lad. And Paul would out muscle him because Paul's not exactly the biggest lad in the world, is he? And yeah. it was just a great, well taken goal, a great ball into the box, and, and Windass finishing there. Um, 
Windass has come up with the goods, hasn't he? Since we, we were a little bit critical of him, I think, at the QPR game and, and the Norwich game. He'd obviously just come back from injury, but obviously we'll talk about his mini documentary in, in a bit. But by all accounts, Danny had a few little words with him and um, he's come up with the goods. And I mean, I mean, really, that goal against Blackburn, what a best way to kick off then scoring two more in the following two games. Yeah, and 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 that would that that sort of then, you could feel almost a sigh of relief go across the two and a half thousand Wednesday fans when that went in, up no. until the second, <laughs> up until hang on Holly, up until the second half when we started seeing the scores from other games. Do you know what though? I think for if for an, a neutral watching it, it were never really in any doubt, was it? But for a Wednesday fan watching it, it was absolutely horrendous, and every minute was an hour. Um, but it was another great goal. If they could do that, why could they not just have done that ages ago? <laughs> it, it it was. I mean, for me, I thought. I, see, I've watched it a couple of times, and it's like, does he scuff it? Does he mean it? Do you know what I mean? It's what it's a scruff. It's not a clean finish, is it? It's like it's into the ground, and it's gone up. It's like, I think Steve, what do you think to win that score? Because he is in fine form, and and. His contract's up and, and everything, so he, he is under a bit of pressure, I think, Windass, or he was. Um, I'm, I'm, he's, he was just the right player. He's a big time player, isn't he? And I, and this is the thing you, you can you can you can argue about his impact on the game. And I think the thing that that sort of hamstrings him a little bit is that there are times where he can be quite passive. I suppose would be would be the best way of describing it. He doesn't he doesn't affect the game as consistently as certain other players. You know, Bannon's always seeking the ball. Bannon's always looking to get on it and 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 have an impact and do things. But Windass has proven time and again over the last, I suppose, two years that he's the right person in the right place at the right time. And you know, yeah, you, you have to. There, there, there are times where you can make a, you know, allowances for players like that if they are going to go and score the goals. And he, um, he, he's, he's that guy who, you know, has proven when it comes, when push comes to shove, um, he's the person that you, you'd want in those sort of situations. Was it a, was it a phenomenal goal? No. Was it a, an important goal? Absolutely. And the guy just seems to score important goals. Um, I, I thought for, for for what he for what he did and what he was, you know, he there were other times within the game, there were other the sort of phases and situations where I thought he was quite impactful. I think it was him that put the ball in in the first place for for Masaba's effort earlier on at nil nil, uh, where he's trying to get in on the back stick. Um, you know, yeah. he, he's he's just that guy that seems to be in the right place there. He, you know, and when when it when it does matter, you know, he comes in and he he, he is the guy that affects things. He scored more goals than players that we've talked about in those sort of situations. You know, you, I think you've talked about Bannon having one goal and three assists. I'm a massive Barry Bannon fan, but when when push comes to shove, you've got wind assets done it more consistently this season and in bigger occasions. Totally agree. Yeah, he had a good chance earlier on before his goal. I think, did he, like, stick his foot out, lobbed it over keeper, and then it was a tight angle, and it just shot through. There was one. And when yeah, there's one at a tight angle. Remember that one. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've never been a Windass fan until the last eighteen months. I think, I think it, his injuries have hampered, hampered him. But I think he, uh, I totally agree with you, Stevie. I think he's a big, a big game player, and and a and a, and I don't think he, that, he's that, sure, that's a that's sure. sorry. Sorry, mate. I was just going to say um, that that's a. That's a big thing, you know. When you talk about these big time players, that's a that's a big it's a it's a, a a big sort of burden that you have to carry, isn't it? It's a it's a thing where you know certain people will rise to the pressure and certain people won't. And I think the thing with with, with Windass is, yeah, there are he's a he's an in and out sort of player in terms of the fact that, as I've just said, he doesn't necessarily impact the game consistently, but at the same time, he's got that waddle body language, as in. He, he slouches about and it looks like he's not bothered and people will say that he looking at him he might seem a little bit lazy and he's not bothered you know we've got the whole social media profile and presence that he's got with some of the things that he has said and done in the past um and he's you know people will 
sort of take his attitude as being a certain kind of way that might have people thinking that he's 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 a bit he thinks he's a bit above his station. But the reality is, you know, if you look at the celebration against West Brom, wasn't it? The goal against Blackburn, um, the way that he celebrated, and as we've said, the, the the documentary that we'll come on to, I have no doubt in my mind that this guy loves playing for Sheffield Wednesday. He loves being part of the setup. He's not, I, I might be wrong, I don't think he's playing for a contract. I think he's playing because he wants to stay at Sheffield Wednesday Football Club mm-hmm. and be involved with the setup that we've got. And if everything falls into place, as we all hope it he, he, he will, he will be a huge part of that. Yeah, I think with him, uh, he was, I know you could take it for granted, but he was banging the badge, kissing the badge after his goal on Saturday. And I think that he had the celebration with Blackburn where he's going like that. So obviously that meant, like he was saying about social media, I I guess, about social media. Uh, the West Brom taking his shirt off, uh, get a yellow card for that all day long, don't you? But um, it, yeah, and he's there. And the last... Last five, uh, four games was it something that he's been instrumental and in? and we've we've seen obviously that Danny Rule has, has asked him to play a, a big part and he's, he's stepped up and done it. So yeah, for me, he is a big time player and and for what you said, Stevie, about him perceived to be going missing, not going missing, sorry, but being a bit lax today, like just not eye catchingly in the game where you have got other players that running around putting themselves about and things like that and he. He's. I, I think he's been. I think he's been cracking, and I think he's going to be a miss if if he goes. But I'm 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 on the camp that he's going to sign. He's on them. Yeah. Ho- yeah Holly, I agree. Um, half time comes. Um, then obviously we, we're going into the second half, and was it what, for me the second half? It was a job done. I think it was tuna. I don't think Sunderland were, had the fight to bother coming back into it. So we were a bit. Were you happy the way that they uh, they attacked the second half, Sunderland? I will never think that it's safe until we've got like seven goals. So I still refreshed. The, the time that I stopped refreshing everyone else's scores was literally the 93rd minute because I just could not. I, I, I couldn't let it lie, even though it was up to us, really. Um but we did make some changes. I don't know what time the subs came on. And we went a bit more defensively, didn't we? And I don't like yeah. that at all. That is not my bag at all. Don't <laughs> don't try and defend it <laughs> when everyone else is winning. I don't know. You'll know what time the subs came on. I don't know. Uh, I don't actually. I, I feel, I've, I've uh, really, really relaxed in my uh, preparation. To, I do apologise. You uh, draw... We brought Bambo on on 64 with Pato for Windass and Paul. We brought Smith and McGasama on at 77. And then we brought Ihequi on at 90. What's that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Six. yeah. Very good. Yeah. He, he, he I know um, Simon mentioned it a lot, but that defender on Paul's side probably felt like it was his birthday when he got subbed off. Oh, oh my God. God. And, and, and that, that just changed the element of the game then, didn't it? Absolutely, Holly. We did go defensive. Put Palmer up into midfield, and 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 it just changed the the nature of the game. And and I think at that point we all knew that everybody else was winning as well. And and mm. and Sunderland had spells in the centre of the park, I, I, as you said about the uh, possession. That they, they they seemed to have a lot of possession, but they huffed and puffed, didn't really create a lot. But that didn't help the heart and the nerves up in the away end, because as I say, we were looking at it, and and I didn't have. Ethan had gone on to Wi-Fi like yourself, Ollie, and and we were like, he kept saying, "Oh, oh they're winning, they're winning," and then we started going. The bounce song started, and Ethan said, "You're going to bounce that," and I went, "No, nope, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything until that final whistle goes. I'm not celebrating or anything because exactly, I've been there. I've seen <laughs> what's happened. So we started bouncing, and yeah. I ain't doing it, pal, until that whistle goes to the referee's mouth and he blows it. Final whistle." So we did go a little bit defensive, but I thought also we had times with um, Pato and Smith where we had a, we, we went sort of long ball and we did sort of, Smith put himself about and we kept the ball down there. And so really, even though I was having palpitations, there wasn't a great deal to worry about. On, on that, we were, Scotch24 did ask a question earlier. Um, was I bouncing? No, I wasn't, but I was very happy at the final result. 
<laughs> I was at home, so yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's about as positive as I get. Then, Mo- and, and oh, Mo- uh, Molly's yeah, just oh, back now. Dan's, Dan's, the boss, uh, the boss Dan's, is here. He's, uh, he's, co- he's come round from his anaesthetic. Boss is on. He says, uh, "Ash has no bounce." So there we are. Then. He predicted the future. Uh... <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Right, full time whistle. What was the atmosphere like in that stand? Oh, please, me and Steve, eight, apologies this bit because I'm I've got FOMO as much as you, no doubt. Uh, I proper missed out on this one. Holly, Simon, just for anyone that's uh, tuning in, listening, what was that atmosphere like on that? Go on, Hull. Ladies I, first. Do, do you know what? I am so exhausted of this season and the tension all the way through. Like, to say it's been a roller coaster is. It, there's, there's not really. It'd be the worst roller coaster you've ever been on. It's. It, it, so I feel like I just felt exhausted and relieved that it was over and everybody was sort of looking around like, it's actually, we actually did it. <laughs> I don't think at any point I actually had thought that it was going to happen and then it did and then we actually did it. <laughs> there were a lot of fancy dress people singing the tequila song. Every, there was a lot, every song you've ever heard. Um, there, yeah. there, there, there was a guy next to me He must have been in his late 50s, early 60s And when Palmer sc- scored the first goal He burst into tears And then when Josh scored the second goal He burst into tears And then final whistle I burst into tears I, I, I don't mind putting my hands up Because oh, I tell you I thought we were man. Stoke game I thought that was us done After the Stoke game at home And I really felt that that one all draw that was us done and there was no we couldn't no no longer do any more and i there was it it felt comparable to me although there wasn't another 40 odd thousand 50 thousand people there it felt comparable to the playoff final it 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 was the celebrations that were going on it it, it was it was pretty amazing because we've gone from this team who were so far adrift in October last year to actually finish actually only three points off the team that we'd just beaten, you know, who comprehensively. There's been so many times that it's been over. I'd already accepted it in October. I'd accepted it. That Millwall game in November, 4-0, was absolutely horrendous. At Christmas, I'd accepted it. The Huddersfield game was just the worst thing ever. Like you say, the Stoke game, there's been so many times you've gone, just get it over with. I can't cope anymore. And we kept clawing ourselves back and then we'd have another, the Ipswich game as well. You just thought, oh, we've been embarrassed again. That I never thought that we'd actually do it. And we actually fucking did it! <laughs> <laughs> and that is and that, exactly how oh, everybody fell after the yeah. game. Pretty much I bet, just, um, I bet. I bet uh, everyone that stayed up in Sunderland or went to Newcastle, I bet I'm sure they had a really good time. And then the the guys that met the team after in, in Sheffield have seen some of the videos. Fantastic. Simon, oh, any, oh, anyways, sorry, I'm just going to oh. say, Simon, um, your favourite player must have been hearing you because um, say hello. <laughs> Paul, Paul's tuned in. Evening, Paul, mate. How are we doing? <laughs> we, we are fantastic, mate. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you've enjoyed your first season in England. And uh, yeah, see, your biggest fans here, the one with the grey hair. So if you've not if you've not seen, uh, he, he, yeah, you, Simon. So there you are. Yeah, Paul, it's <laughs> nice, nice to have. Uh, I, di- I did ask Josh if he wanted to come on for 10 minutes. I saw tried that. To, tried saw to bribe that. him with some uh, rich teas, but he weren't having it. I'm sure he's busy. <laughs> he's probably jetted off already on his uh, holidays. Um, yeah. So, right. So that's well, someone... Well, well, what Go I was on, just sorry. Say is, on, sorry. I just said that we were all relieved when the final whistle went. All the players just sank to their knees, but also they all went and just sat in front of the away end while everybody just sang and Simon cried. And they just <laughs> <laughs> it, that was that was something. Apparently, it's a German thing. I asked the other day of what that's come from. It's a German thing, and they just all sort of sat and took in. What ages? Us. Yeah, and it it was ages. And while we all sort of parted. And I wiped the tears from my grey eyelashes. <laughs> um, it, 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 yeah, it was amazing. And then, and then all of a sudden, they just was it Bannon was the first one. They all just started, they all sprung up and started bouncing. 
And then Will Fox did, did the worm. Did the worm. Part of the atmosphere. Oh, it was amazing. The, the, amazing. the guy on iFollow said that because uh, um, the Sunderland were doing a lap of appreciation, but I'm sure there were only about five people left, saying that they uh, had to force the Wednesday players off the pitch because <laughs> the Sunderland players had to come out for a walk round and a clap. And all Wednesday, well, obviously, didn't want to move, did they? So, so we did do it. You're right, Holly. We did do it. You're right. We're uh, we're still in the championship. So, uh, I got posed a question on the group chat by Stevie. So he's going to be the one that's going to be answering it first. And we, we've got a bit of time here. So, Stevie, you you pose this. So I'm going to ask it you first. So, what's the greater achievement last season coming up or this season staying up? What you you pose it, Stevie? What's your thoughts, mate? You've, you there's a reason you've asked this. And I think I'll um, um, go up. It has to be this season. I think this season um, we've exceeded, given, given where we were in October. And I know you guys off air were just looking at where we started when when Danny Rule came in. I think it was it game game week twelve. Um, yes, we have made the, the the worst start in Championship history. Um, three wins, three points out of thirty nine possible. Um, to get to even being in a conversation. And I, I, I've said, you can go back and, and, and check. I've said on this podcast, sort of October, November time, you could see the little sp- sort of shoots of something coming um, with with Danny earlier on, sort of mid to late November. And I, I can remember, distinctly remember, having arguments on and offline with Blair about how things weren't necessarily done and dusted and the genesis of the whole... Um, it's must win versus it's not must win is because my argument was always if we could get to Easter and be in the conversation and we get through the you know the Christmas period and the January transfer window and and, and be in with an opportunity to, to to sort of get us out there then it's it's doable but it took a hell of a lot of, a, a long time to get to where we got to and you know if you look you, you look back with hindsight and January transfer window wasn't the January transfer window we'd hoped for. Um, we were expecting wholesale change. We were expecting people to be moved on. Um, the, the the vibe from the club was he not got what he wanted when he wanted it. We went right to the last minute to get Pervader in. Uh, Pedersen seemed like a little bit of a knee jerk reaction to not having other players coming coming over the line, sort of thing. And there felt like there was a, a situation with with Marv and Ipswich and one or two other things that were were, were going on where. It might have been the, the the case that we weren't in a situation we thought we might be or we, we were going to be once Danny had had that first transfer window. And um, with everything that's gone on behind the scenes and the fact that there was an expectation, we were a big club last year in League One. Um, and to be where we are starting, you know, the championship and everything that was said pre-season, and it was a bit of a shit show. And um, to get to where we are now, having gone through everything that we've gone through, I just think it's it's... And we've, we've called tonight's episode The Greatest Escape. I think that's absolutely, it's bang on the money in terms of where we are, in terms of, you know, the achievements that have ha- happened and the things that we've done. And I'm sure that there are things that are going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. And, you know, they will come to pass in the next couple of weeks. But for right now, we're enjoying it. And I, I just think it's one of the greatest achievements that I can remember experiencing uh, as a Wednesday fan to be where we were going forwards to be where we are, I think is absolutely brilliant. Simon, you've got 10 seconds since Stevie just took all your time. Yay. <laughs> um, stay, stay, staying up is a far greater achievement than last year because last year we actually nearly threw it away. We were the team that should have gone automatically and we didn't. This season, to, to we, and I'm glad it hasn't been spread all over the radio and the news etc in regards to we've actually done something that no other team's done because it just keeps our manager slightly under the radar um we 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 saw it at, i think we saw it at watford i allude, you, I allude to what you were saying there steve when we, we all went to well three of us went to watford didn't we and i think it was danny's first game first yeah, or second was. game and and we could see then even though we lost green shoots slowly green shoots compared to what we'd seen before i think he was um, only there i think he was there tuesday I think he got there Tuesday and we went yes. Saturday to, and yes. he must have had two training sessions, if that. Yeah. 
and it yeah. might have been a placebo thing where you're wishing, don't you? But yeah, I totally agree, Simon. I thought Watford was yeah. vastly yeah. improved, and we lost to a cracking goal by that young uh, Spreer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and then you look at he he has basically set a task after Stoke, and he said it publicly, didn't he? We have to win the next three games, mm. and we did. Yeah. Um, game done, yeah. finished. That's that's what we had to do. Stay up, and we've done it. So this season, far more, and that's why I'm more than happy celebrating it. And anybody can turn us down, turn the noses up about yeah. us celebrating, staying up. And you know yeah. what? Boo hoo to you, because I will celebrate all day long for what we've achieved this season. Holly, last season or this season? What's your thoughts? Uh, similar to these guys, I think we probably, we, well, we definitely should have just gone up and not had to go through the turmoil of the playoffs. But this season's been like a really long version of that second leg. In the second leg, I just said, in fact, you disagreed with me, Ash, but I'll, I'll let it slide, you know. I just wanted us to be, I just, I wanted us to not be embarrassed by what we'd already done in the first part. I wanted us to just, just make it a respectable, even if it didn't happen, I just wanted to make it respectable. And then this season is like a really long version of that. We were that far behind. We were so far, like, behind Huddersfield and Rotherham that I just wanted us to make it not that bad, make it like a, a few points between us, even if we went down, it just needed to be respectable. So we weren't the worst team and we weren't in that list with Rotherham and Barnsley as being the worst championship team. Just wanted to be respectable. And a bit like in the playoff semi-final, when Smith scored the first goal, everyone's looking at the scoreboard going, is the time left that we can still do it? That's what we've done for the last few weeks. Is there still time that we can just chip away at it? And we actually did it. So I think I think this probably is better. I think it's probably better. I, I agree. And, and everyone who's commented says says so. Uh, Sharman, this season all day long. Mads Ward, Defo this season. Craig, staying up from this shit show that start to finish out, we did amazing. Did Liam, Hend know. Liam Henson for me this season, not only so far behind, but the play turnaround mm -hmm. is incredible. So I think everyone's in agreement with that. And same here. I, I, I totally agree. I love last season. I really did. Apart from Forest Green, I love last season. <laughs> I loved it. I and loved Bob, it. I loved and Barnes and Bart, yeah. Uh, you're, think, you're taking I think that Forest to the Green. I think for, Forest I am going to take that to the. It's, it's you're taking that there. to the grave, aren't you? It is. He's, he's, he's going to have that on your gravestone. Forest, Forest Green, Green, Green in a way. Yeah, didn't yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, and and the way that the whole this whole season's panned out, yeah, I totally agree. For me, this season, I I think it's going to be an exceptional season for somebody else to replicate that sort of uh, achievement. Um, what was it? Six points from seventeen games, one win, um, and to where we are to to finish comfortably outside the relegation as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's me. That's me. Um, A few more well, games and we'd have been in playoffs. <laughs> well, I think if 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 we'd have if, if I know if but maybe's and aunts uncles bollocks and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Um, if, we're, if we're not drawn against Southampton and Stoke, I think we'd have finished fifteenth. That's mad. That's really yeah. uh, for me. That's that is mad. Um, so we we saw obviously now we're, we're into what we call what I've called the, it's the silly season, isn't it already? Um, and everything, and we've seen plenty of um, plenty of uh, chats with players and Danny Rule. And I know Stevie, you tweeted this out um, yesterday and got quite a bit of traction on this. But um, in a six and a half, seven minute uh, interview that uh, the manager did with Rob um, State, is it Staten or Staten? Big fan of the show he is. I'll throw that in. Um, big fan of Dan Hood. Big fan, <laughs> big fan of the, the boss. Yeah, he is. Um, that you just clipped him the last minute of it, which a lot of people picked up on uh, his comments. Um, what 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 did you make to them comments, Steve? I'll start with you because obviously again you you were the one who, who did it, but just in as as brief as you can. <laughs> I'll go quick. Um, it just yeah. felt like the, the the question for anybody that hasn't heard it and isn't aware, Staten asks uh, Danny Rule if he can give any assurances um, as to whether or not he'll be at the club next year, um, and. 
long story short, Dan, he, he was quite non-committal. I think he was basically alluding to the fact that there needs to be some movement behind the scenes. There needs to be some conversations that need to be had with with him and Daypon Chancery about what Chancery can do, what he's, he's going to be capable of doing in terms of offering uh, a little bit of an upgrade, if you like, in terms of the infrastructure at the club. And I think that's, that's what I took from it. Um, my... My feelings coming out of it were were sort of Danny Rule sort of coming out and saying, I would be willing to stay if we can push things forwards. Uh, we can have a look at the training facilities. We can have a look at the you know the, the setup behind the scenes in terms of the the, the board, the committee. Uh, we can have a look at what we're doing in terms of developing the club going forwards, rather than just having this sort of um, you know corner cutting exercise, if you like, of, of, of trying to run a championship club as if it was a Sunday league club. And I mean that with the greatest respect to everybody that's involved, but the structure's not right at the moment. And you can see that having had his pedigree and his experience of working with, you know, elite clubs and elite players and elite setups, we're not that. And I think he wants to be in a situa situation where he wants to make us that. And I think he's very shrewdly turned around and said, the ball's in your court now, Mr. Chan, Chan Siri. What are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, Matt Strickland's just put, uh, Danny wants to improve the club as a whole, not just his own reputation. And I think that it, it comes across as that 100%. Um, Holly, what, what do you make to, to obviously Danny, he's throw, like Stevie says, throwing the gauntlet down to the owner to say, look, back me or um, I know he's under contract as well to 2025, but that doesn't stop things happening though, does it? No, it depends on what uh, what your own thoughts are already. I guess is he's either throwing his throwing uh, the thing to Chancery and saying, put, giving him an ultimatum and saying you either invest or I'll go, or is he saying if someone else wants to come and get me, maybe they could, or yeah. you just don't know, do you? But he's never the, they're never going to commit one way or another as a manager of being asked stuff like that. I think they'll just sort of. Say, say nothing. I think the kind of investment that's needed that he would want is just going to be way beyond what we could do even in the next five years. So I don't know, like, if he's asking for investment in, like, infrastructure, that's not going to happen, is it? It's not, is it? So, if that... And, and I also think if someone did come in for him, it ain't going to take a really long conversation with any literally any chairman of anything for him to go this is not as bad <laughs> so i don't know i think so, the thing just, just on that sorry and i know I, I won't sort of hog it but I, I think the thing with that is it's about whether or not we can op he can operate a little, little bit more shrewdly as in the chairman and danny rule will have experience working with people that are a little bit more in the know in terms of from a footballing perspective and can he then go to Chancery and say if you do this this is an economical way of running a football club or a better way of running a football club uh, compared to what you've done previously and it doesn't take a lot and I would, I would, I would probably argue that um, there are some subtle changes that could be made that keep Danny quite sweet um, and I just think it's about um, we all know we've all heard Chan series very much hands on and he's he's frightened of getting his fingers burned. And I just think if we can sort of say, look, trust me, I'm not going to hurt you. Just let me do this. I'm not going to ask for 10 million for Jordan Rhodes. But if I can have a little bit of investment here and I can have a little bit of this there, we can make some subtle changes. We can employ somebody to, to help you out, you know, at boardroom level and we can do this, that and the other. It will make us look more professional. It will make us look like a better outfit. And we're putting the right money and the right infrastructures in the right places and getting after, you know, you know, targeting where we can get some sort of income that will work within the confines of financial fair play or PNS, whatever you want to call it, um, so that we can be a little bit more shrewd, if you like, to keep him happy. It isn't just that, is it? An investment in what what Danny does, if he's successful, is an investment in whoever wants to pay compensation to us. If he does really well and somebody comes and gets him, they've got to pay for him, aren't they? So, really, we're, it's like selling a player. If he does really well and somebody wants him, then we get money for that as well. So, he's, we're investing in that, regardless of whether he goes or he stays. And, like, 
Dan, I, 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 I do worry that we'll invest in a team that Danny wants and then three months into next season, someone will nab him and we'll be left with people that <laughs> whoever we get next, just like, what do I do with these? Gets this go back or whatever. I don't know. But <laughs> Oh, don't swear. <laughs> but uh, we, in theory, he could stay. We could get relegated next season and he's achieved nothing. So if someone comes in for him, he's going to back himself. He's, you can't wait for the best club to come for you. It, it could go. It could go quite quickly next season. Experience well, means nothing at the moment for the kind of managers that people are taking off of other teams. It's, yeah. it's that experience doesn't mean out anymore. It's about how they define their own footballing brain, really. Yeah. Simon, what were your thoughts on, uh, on his uh, comments? You've got to look at, you've got to go back to when we appointed Danny Rawl and the fact that he's not just appointed Danny Rawl, he's also appointed a management team that sit alongside him, behind him, alongside him. Um, we, we've, we've, I know ourselves, I know Steve and I spoke about it a while ago, I think Christmas time, that the investment that the chairman has put into the, the management structure at the club now, which has put us up on, I think, a better level, a higher level than than, than anything we've had previously for a long long time we, we, we've taken on that european model which of, of which we've never had before of where we've got uh, you know the, there's not just chris powell there's the guy uh sasha, sasha, Lange. sasha, sasha Lange. Lange. Yeah, yeah yeah all these all these people we've taken on and and the chairman's uh somebody somebody somewhere has influenced him into taking this group of people on is it danny rule is it somebody external i don't know who it is but we've taken on this and I'm going to mention it, this Red Bull model um, that, that a lot of these coaches have come from. Um, and they have a particular way of coaching players, of which has meant that we have avoided re uh, relegation and we stayed up. So he's now, the chairman has invested in that. So the chairman would be stupid, and I know it's our chairman, to then throw all that away and not invest further. Now, Changing the infrastructure of the club isn't something that can be done for August, is it? You know, new training, training facilities and stuff like that can't be done by then. But changing the ethos of the club, of bringing people in probably to, to run, let the chairman sit in Thailand or, or come to matches and literally just sit there as the owner and not the influencer anymore. Um, we, we're obviously going to need, he's going to need a transfer budget. He'll probably have in his mind if he's staying, and I'm sure he is staying, that uh we are going he's got ideas of players he wants to sign ideas of players he wants to keep um my opinion is the chairman needs to sit back and let danny rule do his job he's got the infrastructure in place i'm not quite sure what other things danny's going to be asking for other than a change in ethos in the club investment in maybe my opinion is we need new training facilities without a doubt you know it's the biggest achilles heel i think we've got um stadium aside um you know we've we've got a then we we've, we've got to spend some money on some players but i'm not talking millions and millions because to be honest he's made a silk pur purse out of a sow's ear that cisco couldn't do with the players that were signed at the start of the year so i haven't got an issue with you know he's not going to need a lot of money so you know i think it's divisive that journalists want to get a, re a response and our journalists always seem to go for the negatives. And it's always, are you staying? Are you staying? The guy's already spoken about pre-season. You know, we've listened to Bannon saying, I've sat down with the manager, we're talking about a new contract. Windass is supposed to be talking about a new contract. You know, the manager will be involved with these. This isn't a manager who's walking away from Sheffield Wednesday. He's not going to say that he is, though, is he, Si? They've no. got to ask him. Well, no, no, he's, no, no, he's not. But I also don't, I also think... That, that Danny Rule is a far more astute character than that. I think he is a loyal person. I've also heard interviews saying that he doesn't really want to manage in England again after this. He's got a young family who are still in Germany. So if he's going to go anywhere, he's going to go back home. So, and I think he needs to spend another year cutting his teeth in this league to put him back up to probably where he wants to be, which is Bundesliga 1. It's just going to make for an interesting summer, on and off the pitch. Of course, it's uh, and the local journalists and they're going to have a busy old summer. 
Now, um, right, we've all seen it today. Josh Windass fancies himself as a bit of social media, little documentary maker. So um, if you've seen it, that he's uh, put out to two o'clock today was a little uh, insight in, into Josh Windass and his uh, recovery from his hamstring injury and in the last few games. So I'll, I'll go first. I thought it was fantastic. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. I've had preconceived notions, and we spoke about it earlier, about Josh Windass. Blew them out of the water. I really did. Uh, I think um, getting a new insight from a supporter's point of view and us idiots talking about it every week of a player being injured and what they have to go through. And it's not just, oh, come on, do some stretches and get on the physio table. I think, Holly, you put in the group chat as a... Or child, somebody put in the group chat, but oh, I thought it was just physio table and that was it. And it's not; it's all sorts by it. But um, Holly, what did you make to it? Did you did you did you think I, it, did did Windass come across like you thought he would? I hadn't had a chance to watch it because I've been working today on a bank oh, holiday. Uh, but, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, from, I've seen in all the different Wednesday group chats I'm in that people have said that he's come across as really personable and likable, even though he is sort of puts a, an outward uh, persona out, I guess. And I think also Wednesday have been stung before by people that have been injured and have been happy to accept being injured. So I think we just have that as a baseline when people are injured that they're probably not that bothered about coming back. So it sounds to me, like I say, I haven't watched it, but it sounds to me like it shows that the other side of it where people are getting a little bit frustrated with being being injured and trying and they, they want to be involved in in the pitch stuff mm -hmm. but i i, I have seen yeah. it so Steve, you. Have, have you watched it stevie I've, I've i've seen the first it's 25 minutes i've seen the first 15 and I'd, I'd concur with the you know the consensus around how he comes across as being a better or a more personable and approachable person uh he's, he's he comes across as quite a humble guy there's a lot of humility in there um he speaks really well and um, you can tell that he's dedicated to you know getting back and this was the thing that i was saying earlier on about him in terms of his performances i don't know if watching it this afternoon was influenced that but you can tell that there's a real affinity for the club there's a, a real affinity for being in and around the place and a lot of the you know a lot of the the itk stuff that you hear at times is that you know the, there are lots of players the the bigger players are here for you know money they're on a contract, they want to get in, they want to come to Sheffield Wednesday, they want to play, they want to get paid, they want to get out. Um, he doesn't come across like that. Um, in it, he, 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 like I said, he was really warm, humble, nice guy, um, taught really well. I, I, I thought it was, it, it was a great insight and I think coming out of it, I, I, I hope people have a, a more approachable opinion, if you like, and that's probably not the right thing to say, but a, a better feeling and opinion of, of Josh Windows as, as a person. Yeah. Simon, your thoughts on it? No, I thought it was really good. I agree with Steve and Holly. He, he, he's um, come across as a really nice guy. He loves his cups of tea, doesn't he, and his coffees. So um, I I thought he was just come. One thing that struck me was the fact that he was talking when he was with um, Liam Palmer and Barry Bannon, um, just down the road from where I work, actually, in the Currently Works. Um he was talking about the fact that his other experience at other clubs, Rangers and Wigan, is that he didn't have mates there, that they weren't friends. Yeah. And the fact that he, he that a lot of them just go for a coffee after the game, after the training. Um, they, they go down to Kellum a lot. Liam Palmer said that, you know, we go down to Kellum, we have a few coffees. He said that Pato's probably upstairs having uh, smothered fries or something like that. Loaded fries. And and loaded roast. fries, that was it. And and it just struck me that he he's he almost felt to me like he feels playing for Wednesday is like he's at home. It's his home. It's his, it's his buddies. And and that struck me as well when uh, they cut to the Sunderland game and then the celebrations after him and Palm seem to be really good mates, Yeah, you know, um, and it, it was actually quite a good, um, uh, quite a good uh, di documentary to send to Chan Siri and Danny Roll to say, we'd like new contracts, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think we do forget, don't they? They are like late twenties, early thirties, grown men, aren't they? They'll probably instead of what we do after a uh, training or a or a date work, go for a pint. They go for a coffee, and it, it did say says you don't have this with other clubs. It's very rare, 
And he said there's like six, seven of them that go for a coffee, which as fans, it's great to hear that they have got that you and it, unity. And it has come across in the last couple of months, I think, that the team has been on the same page, working together. And it seems like they're, they're all all of them are, are, are pretty good. Well, that's it. Like, if, they, if they want to go somewhere else, they it's... We might not find that somewhere else. There is, you can tell there's a few of them that are, I was going to say this earlier when we were talking about Windass and Palmer, like being in the big games again, that you can tell that they are a unit, some of the players. And, and if they want to stay, uh, if we want them, I think they, they will all stay. But if, if a couple of them want to go, I think they probably will all, like, see, they're all or nothing, I think, in it really. Depends. I, it depends on what we want to do, I guess. What Danny and that's it. We want to do. Yeah. Well, that's that's it. That's that's nearly come to a close. That it's uh, it's been an up and down season, a roller coaster, as you could say. We've seen that one going around social media a bit. Like, uh, has anyone got any other business before we wrap this show up? Stevie, Holly, Simon. Um, no, maybe just a, maybe just a quick. Maybe just a quick one to sort of keep people in the know around what the plans are for the pod over the summer. Um, do you want to do that or shall I? Well, no, yeah, crack on. Um, Dan's just put raffling, by the way. Um, for what? What we're we raffling off? We've just what drawn. We oh, right, we're just drawn, yeah. Do you want to do that first? Uh, no, because I ain't got the details. Okay. <laughs> Wait, can no. I keep. Keep an eye on our socials because we've uh, we've raffled off um, some tickets to a um, a dinner this weekend. Yeah, the person's notified and everything. That's all sorted. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll be for what the crack is with it all. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Keep um, commenting. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is the, the the last game of the season we've just done. Um, we are intending on sort of keeping content going over the summer um tentatively we are scheduling our, our pre uh, our review season review show next week if not the week after um we're trying to co coincide that with any announcements around player releases anything danny rule associated um things that are, are progressing so there's going to be plenty of content from from a sort of regular pod uh, perspective We've got a hell of a lot of um, ours alumni that are lined up, so that's going to be regular regular content going over the season as well. Um, we'll we're looking to keep little bits specials going in there. Um, so you know, the, 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 we've got a summer without Sheffield Wednesday, but there won't be a, a summer without the Wednesday week. Um, obviously, people that are involved in the last man standing, that's going to keep going. We I've got designs on potentially doing something around a sweepstake in the Euros just for a bit of fun, uh, a bit of shits and giggles in a WhatsApp chat that won't cost an arm and a leg and will help us raise much, need, much needed funds, even though we, we, we've spent it well, uh, much needed funds towards our community initiative. Uh, we want to keep that going. Uh, we want to keep the, the, the buzz and the positivity and, you know, we want to celebrate this fantastic club as it is at the moment uh, with, you know, all things Danny Rule and we want to be together when it comes to, I mean, any sort of intervention, should Danny Danny Rule decide that he's not going to be around um, when it comes to mid July? So keep your eye on the socials, keep your eye on Facebook, uh, Instagram, X, you know, everything else, all, all the the usual ways it will catch us. Uh, plenty of updates. We are keeping going. Um, there, there'll, there'll be a little bit of movement here and there, but you know, the Wednesday week ain't going away. Oof. <laughs> uh, yeah, last one from me is I just want to say a massive thank you. Uh, the first thank you is to you guys. So Holly, Simon, Stevie, Dan, Blair, John, and Charlie. Um, it's been a it's been fantastic season, ups and downs. Uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, the next one is to all you guys. At the minute, there's what is it, eight hundred and eighty five people watching at the minute. So everyone who's watched who's interacted, who's commented, uh, anyone who's ex Facebooked all the rubbish that I tweet out and put on Facebook, uh, it's much appreciated, really uh, appreciate it. Uh, and everyone who's donated eggs, mate, anyone who's donated an egg, thank you, uh, who's donated money, who's donated anything for our community fund, uh, we've 
Um, I think for a start off first season, I think we've done fantastic. 679 eggs, I think 60 tickets, I think uh, we've donated. Um, countless shirts, countless uh, goodie bags as well. Scarves, we Scarves uh, everything, anything that we, we get in, in in terms of any sort of money goes straight out to that. Um, and we love it. It's been fantastic and it really is great to put it back. So thank you. Um, and the biggest thank you, Danny Rule. Thank you, my man. That's my biggest thank you. Um, players, staff, everyone, the club, um, fantastic. And um, we are staying around, like Stevie says. So this is the end of probably the regular show, but there's going to be loads of when Dan comes back and uh, takes the helm because I'm not very good at it. So we love you all. Thank you very much. And uh, we will see you real soon.